<laughs> Hello to all. Uh, my name is Ilona Olehlova. I am representing Tiny Czech Organization Mission Reconnect. We do Erasmus Plus projects. Uh, in July, we did one which was called Idea Lab uh, project and partnership and project making event. And also like what we try to do is kind of network with interesting people which are like linked with Erasmus. And today I have very special guest with me. Her name is Yeva. I hope that I pronounced it right. And just to give you a little bit of background, I met Yeva thanks to the Erasmus in Greece. Yeva is coming from Latvia and uh, she was so nice to find a space in her busy schedule. And why I in invited her? Because she's now, now part of one very cool project supported by the Erasmus Plus program. And it's all about food. So Yeva, thank you for your time. And I will now give you space to be introduce yourself and also the project which you are now, I think you are the one part of the team which is leading it. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here, invited by Ilona, and I think this is one of the testaments how uh, Erasmus Plus uh, pro program uh, does its good job and connects different pre people from different countries and, and uh, generates ideas in, in our tiny minds, uh, because I think this uh, international cooperation is truly one of the reasons why there is so much interesting stuff ha happening in the whole Europe. So about myself, uh, as Ilona already said, my name is Eva and uh, I come from Latvia and my, let's say, background within the field is uh, quite long. I started uh, in non-governmental organizations uh, when I was 14 uh, as a participant and then I started leading some local activities and um, my, I wrote my first project, local one, when I was 16. And since then, it's just been going up. Uh, my first youth exchange that I wrote was in 2010. And um, since then, I completely fell in love with this program and possibilities it offers. Um, my, let's say, professional interest has mostly been in project management in general. Uh, in the fields of culture, like uh, cultural events, uh, also marketing. Uh, and also I'm really, really interested in different uh, innovative educational methods, uh, which is one of the things that I usually, uh, let's say, explore or implement in my project. Uh, regarding uh, this particular one, um, let's say I will start with the short background story of my organization. Uh, it's called Baruts. Uh, it's super small, and, and uh, the project called Network that we are going to talk about today is the first one that we actually submitted. Oh, sorry. It's second one we submitted, but first one we got accepted. Uh, but, uh, like, it's, let's say, a start of our, um, our work, because before we didn't do anything act actively. Uh, the organization was founded particularly with interest to explore different uh, ways how food can be used to uh, generate social impact. And so the idea of the project is really connected to that. Um, the project is called Network for Impact, uh, but uh, we call all among ourselves, call it the Network, uh, because the aim of the project is to create an international network uh, of organizations that are, that are especially interested in using food as, as a way to uh, do something good in the society. And uh, we have had lots of um, discussions and talked to lots of people and understood that this is a topic that is not very understandable yet uh, because it's, first of all, it's new, of course, this kind of idea, but also the fact that lots of people think, okay, food. We do intercultural evening and that's it. And I would say, yes, intercultural evenings are part of that, but it's just sharing some type of food. Food has so many more qualities that can be explored, explored in terms of education or, uh, I don't know, integration or many other aspects that are super important in our work as uh, like uh, people working in social impact fields. Definitely. Oh. 
Yeah, Sorry. I just want to add that I really agree with you because I am proud member of Community Garden. And yes. once when I started a few years back, it's this amazing feeling when you kind of make your own potatoes. Even I'm coming from the village and when I was a child, I was working in the fields. But now when you speak so much about the food, that's why also your project catch my attention because you really speak about something what we all need, it's food. And finally, you also take it like, let's say, from the point of the impact. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your your addition, let's say, is very on point uh, because that's one of the things I wanted to continue with, that uh, food is not only, uh, let's say, a new topic, but also uh, we as a, as a group of organizations that, uh, that started this project see it as something that can be super impactful because exactly of this reason, everybody needs to eat. <laughs> but also everybody has emotional and historical um, connection to food uh, that also connects to the place where they live, that also connects to the uh, people uh, that are dear to us. And, you know, it, it has so much meaning in our life that it definitely has a potential uh, to create genuine impact. Uh, and um, all of these reasons were why we wanted to explore in all European countries, or let's say all countries of the European Union, uh, what organizations do uh, in regards to food-related social impact methods. And uh, what are these methods, which is the most interesting part for us, because I am sure that, as you said, there is community gardens and there is, uh, I don't know, intercultural evenings. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure that when we're finished with the research, uh, I'm sure there'll be some genuinely innovative concepts that will appear. And I'm really curious to see what will those be. For example, I've heard about bread therapy, where people... Um, Ned dough and then they bake it and all of the process and feelings uh, that it, it empowers them because when you bake the bread and take it freshly out of the oven, it's such a nice feeling. You have made something that is truly delicious and pleasant, but also meaningful because bread is one of the most important things in our, let's say, cuisines in almost any country. So, yes, this is one of one of the main parts about the project. Uh, and also I would like to emphasize that we included part about research in the project because uh, we consider that um, a lot of times in, in non-governmental organizations and in youth work and social impact field, there is not enough uh, data-based uh, mm -hmm. solutions and ideas. Uh, lots of things are done mostly, well, I will not say always, but like there is this uh, tendency to do things, okay, there is a project application term, let's do something, or I have interest in this, let's do something. But for us, it was really interesting and important to learn how to do research in this field so we can uh, base our future work on more data-based uh, information and like you know have more deeper understanding about what's actually happening mm -hmm. and also it's also a very nice way just to connect with other organizations in all europe so this is very strategically well rounded mm -hmm. activity within our project that we think will bring a lot of good capacity for the organizations but also be a good base for the network that i mentioned before mm -hmm. and then of course later we will do an online conference and video interviews and, and other good things so the world hears about our, our wonderful work. But the research is really the main uh, main focus and main part. And we are extremely curious and excited to see the results, which will come, I guess, next year, beginning of next year. Me too, honestly, because I know that you are now posting that people, like if they are somehow in this food field, they can contribute. So I will also share the link, of course, to your project and to this research part. And I really get catch what you say about the bread, because I know like organizations which do bread therapy, but when you reminded me what always connects me with Erasmus Plus projects and bread is that if we go to Latvia, Lithuania, you have this black bread. 
And people, for example, from the Balkans, they are like, what is this? I want my white bread. And when we turn it and we come to the Balkans, like always, like people are asking for also this different kind of bread. So I think it's also like very nice, let's say, metaphorically, way also, like, let's say, how the food can be kind of also window to the intercultural learning in exactly. this Erasmus Plus like settings. And I also like really think that the point which you are making about the research is very important because we, I think still sometimes I like, yeah, I have a feeling that we are floating on some topics and the research make us like to really settle down. Now I will just add that your project, if I, I hope I'm not wrong, is supported by the Latvian National Agency. It is the Key Action Tool Strategic Partnership Project. A small scale partnership. Small, small scale partnership. And I know that a small scale partnership, we have also one, like the Czech organization, are being seen like the steps, let's say, like from the very small key action one to something more complex. Can you maybe tell us when you were preparing the application, how it was for you? Because like your organization, the same like mine, we are, let's say, at the starting point. Both of us has like big experiences, but still, it's a little bit different when you are applying for something like this. Well, uh, the first thing for me was, uh, I already had this project idea a while ago. It actually started in one event where I noticed we were baking gingerbreads together with participants of one project and uh, the smell and everything before Christmas, it was beautiful. And then the next morning I felt, oh my God, the group, the feeling in the group has changed so much. So I started to think, okay, what could be the other ways how we could use food to achieve changes in different groups or, or other social impact? And it was in 2019 or 18 already. Uh, and this idea was in my head all of the time. It was there, but I didn't know how to implement it the best. It was just there. And then uh, a few years ago, I heard about this small scale partnership when it appeared. And for me, it sounded like a perfect opportunity because um, before I had uh, experiences with youth exchanges and trainings, and this didn't sound like uh, a project to be done in that type of setting. And small scale partnership offered the freedom to implement something that is out of the ordinary box that is uh, usually implemented, let's say in the, uh, key action one project. Uh, so I got interested, I explored it a bit, and then for the second uh, round, uh, I went to a seminar about project writing from our national agency, and I used these two days uh, to actually write the project uh, step by step and ask people on the spot, like the facilitators and representatives of national agency, everything in detail. And the, like, let's say the good thing at the moment is that the program is relatively new. So we have a chance to somehow influence with our good practices, how it will look and what will be the requirements for, for the program in future. Uh, so I, I thought it was really, really great opportunity to put inside or let's say um, more create, not very creative, but let's <laughs> different approach uh, to this type of project uh, within the field. Uh, the writing itself, as I said, it started in this seminar and then I finalized it uh, by myself. So it was quite smooth because I, uh, I, I already had some project writing experience before. Um, and the partners, the partners were, was actually quite easy to find. Uh, because with one of the partners we had already talked before, uh, it's a, per it's a person that I know very well from other, other projects. Uh, and we were talking, yeah, we should apply for something together because we both have new organizations. Uh, and, uh, it was opportunity for both of us to, let's say, uh, create some kind of system in the organization and develop this, uh, let's say, more administrative part, you know, because you need something to start with. Mm. And it was also a good, good point for this project. And then another organization joined us in partnership building activity that we had in Bitolo in, uh, in Macedonia last year in August. Uh, so it was really nice for all of us. 
uh, also not only from the topic point of view, but also to actually build the capacity of our organizations. Mm -hmm. Definitely, like I think these small cooperative partnerships are a really good way also for my organization now. We also do some like local activities, we did some international and now we also go to the online space. So I think it's like this very nice step towards like something bigger and definitely for the capacity. I am now just like like wondering, like uh, is there like something what uh, you, you think that it can be maybe very challenging for newcomers and you would like to tell them to don't be afraid to apply for such a projects like that it's really possible like some kind of um, last tip or like encouragement like mm -hmm. there are a few things definitely as you mentioned uh don't be afraid of applying <laughs> <laughs> um about this particular program i would say Mm, the toughest part is maybe the finances because it's not, like in other programs, there is lots of lump sums and definite amounts that you can enter the system and it calculates things automatically. And, the, and here you have to create the budget yourself. So th this is a bit tricky, especially if you don't have experience with the actual cost of things. So uh, my dearest advice to anybody who is new to the field is consult people, don't leave it for the last moment and consult people on the actual costs of the things you want to achieve and never underpay uh, <laughs> people uh, who will be involved in the project because um, that's also one of my my perspectives that uh, yes, there, there can be volunteers and there can be volunteers involved in the project but if people are devoting like a lot of their time and lots of their efforts, uh, it's nice to uh, pay them something for their good work. And this way we also contribute to uh, increasing the quality of level uh, of, uh, of youth work. Uh, and I think it's super, super important. So the finances is the tricky part make sure it, it's good uh, and and planned well and everything. Uh, my advice how to do it is the best is consult somebody who knows the stuff, at least for the first project, so you will have impression what type of uh, um, positions should go in the, in the budget. Uh, and otherwise, I would say just make sure that you are uh, doing something that you like that you like the idea, because especially for the first projects, it will give a lot of lot more of motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, because first projects are always harder. You get through lots of hardships because you have to learn a lot. Uh, and uh, and if you like what you do, it will be easier. And the third thing, uh, what will make it easier is if you do it with somebody that you might know even a little bit because then you have a chance at discussing some difficult questions which you will have because there are different understandings of how people work, different understandings of finances and other things. So um, then you can discuss these uh, these difficult questions much easier and, uh, and uh, let's say, end on a good note. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, these are maybe three most important things from, from let's say, from an experienced project <laughs> manager point of view. You know, thank you very much. I would not say it better by myself, and I completely agree. Like especially about the finance and the budgeting and working with people which you maybe a little bit know because it makes it a bit easier. Yeva, I know that now you are in other event. You told me, and uh, you will be very busy. So I will. I now want to just thank you very much for your time and for your uh, tips and advices and encouragement to others who would like to try this small cooperative project. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me, and uh, have a wonderful day. <laughs> you too.